Good morning. Thank you for being here. This is very important. My name is Elizabeth Savage, and I'm the Director of Human Services for the City of West Hollywood. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. As a lesbian who came out of the closet in 1976, oh, that's 40 years ago, and I didn't know it was different, but I, I know today it, it was a different time, and God forbid we go back to anything like that. I really value today's program in a very personal way. As a part of the LGBT community also, I have seen many changes in how health care and services are provided over the years. In patient contact and care, not that long ago, there was no legal recourse for a lesbian or gay couple to serve as, to be recognized as spouses in the eyes of hospitals and many medical providers and organizations. Many doctors lacked information and sensitivity to be able to understand and treat their lesbian and bisexual patients. Today's training will address health disparities for lesbian and bisexual women in Los Angeles County with three objectives. First, to increase cultural competency about lesbians and bisexual women. Second, to increase knowledge of effective communication techniques. Third, to increase confidence in taking an accurate sexual health history with lesbians and bisexual women. To be sure, disparities still exist. However, with the information you gain today, you will be able to provide improved health care to your patients and at your facility. And you will have enhanced knowledge to take back to your organizations about providing improved health care for lesbian and bisexual women. We have opportunities for you to become a trainer or to have training at your organization. If you are interested in this, please complete the training request form that you can find in the left side pocket in your packet and return that to the registration table during the break or after the conference. On behalf of the City of West Hollywood, I want to thank members of the Los Angeles County Lesbian and Bisexual Women's Health Collaborative. We do not have an acronym. You have to say the whole thing. <laughs> Who have worked to make this training a reality. Also, we are grateful to our West Hollywood City Council for its support, and I would like to give special thanks to former Councilwoman Abby Land, who, when she was on the council, helped launch this collaborative and ensured that city funding was made available for this work. Next, I would like to introduce the Honorable Abby Land, who is the Executive Director and CEO of the Trevor Project, a nationally recognized nonprofit providing crisis intervention and suicide prevention services to LGBT youth. Previously, she served as the co-CEO of the Saban Clinic. And also, we have a special thank you for you and all the speakers and collaborative members today. And you can keep this in your office to know that this visibility is so critical. So thank you. And so Abby has an impressive history of ensuring care to underrepresented populations over the years. and. She has been an advocate for so many of us and my personal role model in the LGBT community work that you have helped us with. So, Abby Land. Thank you, thank you Elizabeth. And I just want to say thank you all for being here. I think I'm embarrassed to say it could be eight or nine years ago that Corey Plank, who worked with me then, uh, and I kind of brought people together to talk about developing a lesbian health bill of rights because we knew there were such health disparities for the lesbian community and we knew that for many providers it was, you know, the cultural competency was non-existent. And to see how this has evolved uh, and that we've kept going it took a long time, but everyone really kept hanging in there to make uh, this a reality and to really recognize over the time that we really need to make sure there's visibility for lesbian and bisexual women. The health disparities that uh, those communities face are really big. And again, if we don't talk about it, and I'm so glad we don't have an acronym because it's really important to say the words lesbian and bisexual because we want to make sure that we never be invisible. And I think especially now in this new political climate that we will be uh, facing for God knows how long, um, I have to say 
this work that you're doing today is really important. It's really important that we remain visible. It's really important that people understand the cultural competency issues, the communication issues, and actually the advocacy issues that as a community we will be needing to do to ensure that women, uh, lesbian, bisexual women, get the kind of services they need, that there's funding available for those services, and that the strides that we have made in having healthcare become more accessible and more culturally competent, that we keep moving forward. And that's gonna take all of us collectively doing that. So I just wanna say thank you so much. I wanna thank um, everyone you hear today, from Janet to Ellen to Corey to Elizabeth to Sue and everyone else. They have been doing this um, never stopping and I'm just proud of getting it started and proud that the city continues to support it. So thank you all very much for being here and for all the work you're gonna do, thank you. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, Abby, thank you, Elizabeth. My name's Ellen Item. I'm the director of the Office of Women's Health for LA County, part of the Department of Public Health. As people come in, feel free to use this table. For everybody that's coming in, this table is available, as well as the, as well as the third one. So please come in and you are welcome. So this is the uh, official good morning to our first and very long time coming um, Lesbian and Bisexual Women's Health Conference. Yay! <laughs> so as Abby was talking about, this kind of came as a, a joint effort. Um, the Lesbian and Bisexual Women's Health was identified as a, as a priority issue in 2007 at the Los Angeles County Women's Health Policy Summit. And simultaneously, the city of West Hollywood was working on, the with the Lesbian Visibility Committee, they were working on adopting the Lesbian Health Bill of Rights. So it ended up, we worked together, and we brought key stakeholders together in lesbian and bisexual women's health and it later evolved in 2009 to the LA County Lesbian and Bisexual Women's Health Collaborative without our acronym, okay. Um, so the collaborative was actually um, created by individuals concerned about the health disparities for lesbian and bisexual women within Los Angeles County. So the members include individuals, and organizations that experience, that are advocates um, for health and well-being of lesbians and bisexual women, and we represent healthcare facilities, government, community organizations, and academic institutions. So needless to say, the lesbian and bisexual women's health remains a critical issue today, and as Abby was saying, even more so. So our key priorities which today actually represents, has been to develop a LA-based, culturally competent curriculum on lesbian and bisexual women's health for groups of healthcare professionals, providers, for lay staff, and for health administrators. And for today at the conference, um, we want to promote research, supporting community advocacy, increasing cultural competencies, promoting public policy, and ultimately with the goal of improving the health care and the health status of lesbian and bisexual women. As members of the collaborative, the Iris Cantor UCLA Women's Health Center, the City of West Hollywood, Sue Lavacare, who you're gonna hear for, from this morning, Susan Cohen, if you're here, we can't see you yet. Um, Farina Derry, if you're here, um, and Elaine Serrani, I saw in the back, were instrumental in conducting focus groups on research for underrepresented lesbian and bisexual women in Los Angeles County. And what the study did was that it provided a better understanding of the triple threats. And that means being a woman, being a lesbian or bisexual woman, and belonging to one or more of the groups 
of either Latinas, Asian Pacific Islanders, African Americans, veterans, or those lesbians that were over 65 years old. So you'll hear a little bit more about that today, but much of the sentiment really did boil down to, to a couple things. One was creating in inclusivity and culturally responsive policies and practices, fostering a welcoming environment, and the need to train health professionals. The finding of that research really shaped the content and the format of this conference and who we decided on the selection of the speakers and the panelists. So our first speaker that we're going to have today is Dr. Patty Robertson, who is a true leader in the field. She's going to give an overview of the unique issues related to lesbian and bisexual women's health and address best practices. She's going to be followed by Tari Henneman from the Human Rights Campaign in Washington, D.C. to speak about policy and education. Sula Vakari is a healthcare consultant focused on lesbian and bisexual women's health, and she's really helped guide the collaborative in developing a training curriculum, and she's going to present that training curriculum today. Over lunch, we have a dynamic panel of clinicians and mental health providers who are going to share their experiences caring for lesbian and bisexual women and addressing the health care disparities that they face. So our call to action for you today is to become that change agent, either for yourself, for lesbian and bisexual women you serve, or for the community at large bringing two, two things to your attention that was already mentioned. One is you'll see on your, car, your, on your table, there's yellow cards throughout the, day, throughout the morning. People are going to be speaking. Please write down your questions. Just raise your hand. Someone will come around and pick up um, the, the card. Sometimes it's easier to do that. It's hard to get everybody to be able to speak. So please feel free to do that throughout the morning. The second is that members of the collaborative um, are available to conduct, what was mentioned, these free trainings to your and on-site at your facility. And that could be to physicians, it could be to your nurses, it could be to your administrators. It's an opportunity that is, an, you know, is a really op great opportunity that we want you to take advantage of. So the purple sheet that's in your, um, that's in your packet, um, we want you, if there's two ways you can do this. One is you'd like your facility to get trained. The other is that, and it can be in small or large groups, it's up to you. The second is that you would like to be trained, and you'd like to become a train the trainer so that you want that training. So use this form in both ways and just tell us which of those you'd like to do. Um, thank you for your patience. The parking was a little bit of a nightmare. We understand that. Um, because the, the good problem was we were absolutely overwhelmed with people that wanted to come today. We had to turn many, many people away, which is not, uh, you know, we did not want to do. But again, thank you for your patience for those of you that had to park at the adjacent lot. Um, so we do, we do want to mention, you've noticed there's the photographers here. If you don't want your picture taken, make sure that you tell that, the photographers so that they can eliminate anything that you're in. Okay, and then lastly, I want to acknowledge the representatives that are here today, and we truly appreciate um, the elected officials or their representatives taking the interest and support of the issue of lesbian and bisexual women's health. Um, so if you could raise your hand. Um, Angie Ar Ar Arameo, field representative for assembly member Adrian Nazarian. I saw you here somewhere. Um, Marisol Barajas, District Director for Assemblymember Patrick O'Donnell, welcome. Um, Daisha Austin, Deputy District Director for Assemblymember Reggie, so Jones, so Reggie Jones Sawyer. Saw you, okay. Um, Tonya Martin, Field Representative for Senator Ricardo Lara. You're welcome. <laughs> Truly, thank you for your support. So I'm now going to turn this over to Dr. Janet Pragler. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay. Dr. Janet Pragler, she's the director of the Iris Cantor UCLA uh, Women's Health Center, and she's been interest, instrumental in moving the issue of lesbian and bisexual women's health forward. She works with the collaborative. She works at UCLA, and in her volunteer work at the Venice Family, Family Clinic, 
She's been critical in educating health providers, allied health professionals, medical students, and health administrators in the importance of in inclusivity in patient care delivered to lesbian and bisexual women. Thank you. Thanks, it's so exciting to be here. So um, seven years ago, the members of the um, Lesbian and Bisexual Women's Health Collaborative came to me at UCLA and said, you know, will you join us? Um, the Iris Canner Center was founded over 20 years ago to respond to inequities basically in academic medicine. Um, when I was in medical school, what we learned about, frankly, was the 70 kilogram man. Um, and it was a male model. And anything that wasn't OBGYN, we learned about in men. And medical research, believe it or not, has been primarily done in men. Um, so our center has really tried to address those inequities. Um, this conference was largely funded by the city of West Hollywood that's providing administrative support. But at that time, there was not funding. And so one of the things that we had to find was not only the will, but frankly, the money to do this. And so I want to recognize someone in the audience um, who has been so important to us. Um, we could not have done this without the Iris and B. Gerald Canner Foundation and our executive advisory board. And they did buy you some muffins today. Um, so I would like to ask Ryan Fisher, the vice president of the foundation board, to please stand so that we can thank them.